Next up, the NFC South. We're going to talk about the team that everybody seems to hate right now just because of how good they've become uh, over the last month or two, and that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So the first-round pick, man, they traded up a spot with San Francisco, and they selected Tristan Wirfs, which people thought was the best offensive lineman in that draft. I know that uh, we talked about Andrew Thomas being like a dark horse offensive tackle, which he ended up going first uh, out of that position group. But Tristan Wirfs was being touted. It was between him and Jedrick Wills pretty much as who was the best offensive lineman. And all of a sudden, Tampa Bay ends up with Tristan Wirfs. Good offensive line help that's going to help out Tom Brady. Um, And then Antoine Winfield Jr., not to be confused with senior that played in the NFL as well, is a defensive back that gets drafted. So they helped out their secondary as well. So they helped out their, their two biggest holes on their team in the first two rounds. So that's huge for Tampa Bay. Because you think about it, their offense, we already know how talented they are, traded for Rob Gronkowski, which makes them even better. But then on top of that, their biggest holes on offense were the offensive line. They addressed that. Well, then on defense, well, they have a pretty good front seven, one of the best run defenses in the NFL. They need help in the secondary because their secondary got torched. And then they get Antoine Winfield at number 45. Phenomenal job by Tampa Bay. And then they added a running back on top of that because there's question marks behind Peyton Barber, Ronald Jones. Are they the franchise running backs? Probably not, but is Tom Brady going to operate like he did in New England with a running back by committee approach? It seems like it because they drafted Keyshawn Vaughn at running back. So Vaughn, Jones, Barber, Werfs at offensive line, Winfield at defensive back. Solid draft by Tampa Bay. The New Orleans Saints didn't make a lot of uh, selections in the NFL draft this past week just because they had a lot of their picks taken away from... um, from drafting all over the board in the NFL draft. But they had three selections in the first three rounds, which at most most of the time, that's all that matters. Uh, one selection in the first round, that was Cesar Ruiz, the offensive lineman. We saw how emotional he was to get drafted by the New Orleans Saints. And then they had Zach Bond and Adam Trotman um, being selected in the third round. So Zach Bond, we had him being drafted by the Ravens, or I did at least in the uh, in the first round at number 28. And the fact that he fell in draft boards because of the diluted sample controversy, we don't know for sure why that sample was diluted, but he falls in draft boards. The uh, Saints decided to make a move on him, see that, that he's still on the board. Hey, Cleveland, let's trade up. Let, let us trade up to the number 74 pick. Let's see if Zach Bond could be our linebacker that we can pair with Demario Davis, that we can pair with Kiko Alonso. And Zach Bond is going to be a linebacker in New Orleans, and that is a very good pick for the Saints. Moving on to the next NFC South team that we have, the Carolina Panthers. We talked about them uh, earlier when we talked about the Lions. We talked about how they had an all-defensive draft, which was the first time in the modern era, I believe, that a team has selected nothing but defenders in the NFL draft in a single year. So Derek Brown, uh, shout out to him for a guy that's from Linear High School, just right down the road from us. Um, He was selected in the first round, round round one, pick seven. There was a lot of talk between Derek Brown or Isaiah Simmons, who's the best defensive player in this draft. And it ended up being that the Panthers decided to go with Derek Brown as their defensive tackle. And then in round two, another first round talent seems to fall to them. Round two, pick number 38 overall, Yotur Gross Matos, defensive end. And then Jeremy Chin, a lot of people didn't talk about him, but there were some people out there that said, hey, don't sleep on Jeremy Chin. He's a good safety uh, that could be drafted in the early second round. Uh, he ended up falling to the last pick of the second round with the Panthers trading up with Kansas City to select Jeremy Chin. So their safety, their defensive end spot, and their defensive tackle get the biggest boost from this past NFL draft. And then obviously, you can see on the screen the other defenders that were drafted. A lot of secondary help for them. And then the last team in the NFC South, the Atlanta Falcons. So a lot of controversy surrounds the first pick for the Falcons at number 16. That is A.J. Terrell, the cornerback uh, from Clemson. 
a lot of people said that, well, Terrell could have been around later in the first round. Why not trade back? Why not hit up the Eagles and say, listen, you have the number 21 spot. We'll trade back to number 21 if you want to jump up to number 16 because we know that you need a receiver. We know that Henry Ruggs was just taken, the first receiver off the board. We know that Jerry Judy was just taken, the, the selection prior to this number 16 pick. Listen, CeeDee Lamb is still on the board. If you don't trade up to number 16, the Dallas Cowboys are going to take him. But they decided to stay put. Instead of trading back and acquiring more picks, possibly because at number 19, the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, almost at Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders took a corner at number 19, and maybe the Falcons got word of that, and they didn't want Terrell to be gone uh, to the Raiders. But if they feel like that, uh, Terrell is their guy and can compete uh, for a starting cornerback role, along with Sheffield and Isaiah Oliver. So we'll have to see. I mean, when you go in and practice against uh, one of the best wide receivers in the game today, you know, you're bound to improve. But I like the selection that they made in the second round with Marlon Davison, the defensive end from Auburn. Overall, I love that the Falcons addressed their needs. Uh, their draft strategy could have been a little bit different, and you could have really taken advantage of getting those extra picks. But at the end of the day, they got their... That the positions that they needed, they addressed uh, their needs. So, good job by the Atlanta Falcons. 